All right, we're going to look at how energy works uh, in a spring and how energy works in a pendulum. Basically, how energy works for these simple harmonic motion problems. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because we've already talked about energy. We're just going to take everything that we've done with energy before, where we have mechanical energy turning into kinetic energy. Sorry, when we have potential energy turning into kinetic energy and apply it specifically to these situations and see what kind of extra information we can get out of it. So, let's look first at a horizontal spring. It's just moving side to side so we don't have to deal with gravity. So, we have our x0 position, which is our equilibrium position, and then we have our amplitudes, x equals a and x equals a. At equilibrium, the spring is not stretched, so there's no spring potential energy. But at x equals a and x equals a, we have our maximum potential energies. So let's look at a couple other things that we have. Maximum potential energy is at x equals a and x equals negative a. Since it's a spring, the potential energy is 1 half kx squared. So our maximum potential energy is going to be 1 half ka squared. Now, because there's no kinetic energy at the amplitude, because we've stopped and are coming back, the total energy at x equals a is also potential energy, 1 half ka squared. So that's my total energy for the problem, 1 half ka squared. And we know that total energy never, ever, ever changes. That's good. So my total energy is 1 half ka squared. My maximum kinetic energy occurs when we don't have any more potential energy. And that only happens when the spring is not stretched, which happens to be the equilibrium position. So my max kinetic energy is at x equals 0. And I know that my max kinetic energy will always, always be at equilibrium. Any type of simple harmonic oscillator that we have, maximum kinetic energy is always at equilibrium. Now, because of the conservation of energy, all that potential energy we had is turning into kinetic energy. So, the maximum kinetic energy is equal to the total energy. We already know the total energy. So 1 half mv squared for kinetic energy is equal to 1 half ka squared. And from that, we could find the maximum velocity of this object. Now, some things to remember. Remember that the spring constant, we can always find that if we have the period. We can always find that from the period for a spring equals m over k. And we'll do an example of that at the end. This is what we do with a horizontal spring. Oh, and just to show you the algebra, we're going to solve that for kinetic energy, sorry, for the spring constant. So we divide both sides by 2 pi, and then we square both sides, so it's t over 2 pi becomes t squared over 4 pi squared equals just m over k. Now we have to do some cross multiplication, get k on top. So k is equal to 4 pi squared m over t squared. That's how we can get the spring constant if we know the period. Just a good piece to know. Now, energy in a vertical spring is a little bit more fun because we're adding gravity in. So there are three lengths we're concerned with. One is the unstretched length of the spring. One is the equilibrium position of the spring with the mass in it. So imagine we have just a spring hanging, and then we add a mass. If we let that gently fall into where it stops moving, that's going to be this equilibrium position. And then we have the bottom position. So if we add the mass to the unstretched spring and drop it, it's going to fall all the way down, stretch out the spring, and pop back up. That's this last position that we're drawing. That's kind of at the bottom of our motion. Let's go ahead and label these. First one is unstretched. The second one is equilibrium. And the third one is the maximum stretch of our spring. 
So we'll draw that blue line for equilibrium, call it x0. That top one, that top one is going to be one of our amplitudes, and that bottom one is going to be our other amplitude. So we're looking at this as if we drop a mass from that unstretched spring. And we're going to pull it through equilibrium down to that bottom amplitude. Now, one thing that we can do, given the spring constant of the spring, is find the equilibrium. So we're going to do one. So that equilibrium position is where the net force is equal to zero. That's where we're going to have the gravity pulling against the spring force, and it's where those two things are equal to each other. So we can find this stretch to equilibrium by just doing mg over k. And in this situation, I'll show you where those are in a second. Now, at the lowest point, the lowest point is where we have all of that gravitational potential energy and turning it into spring potential energy. So we get all the energy from the top, which is gravitational potential, and it's not moving. And that bottom spot where it turns around and comes back, we set those two equal to each other. So we have gravitational potential energy equal to the stretch of the spring, or the spring potential energy. And so by solving these two equations, you can find the amplitude and that lowest point. So x for equilibrium, to give me the amplitude that we got in number one, is the distance from a to that x0 position. And the height that we used in the second part goes from the top to the bottom. And the next thing that we can do for max speed is the exact same thing that we did above, and say that the 1 half mv squared still equals 1 half ka squared. We can always, always, always do that for a spring. And we're going to look really quickly at an energy graph. So we have our amplitudes. Now, that first one that we just drew is the kinetic energy. When we're at the amplitudes, we're not moving. And when we're at x equals zero, we're moving very fast. So we start off with zero kinetic energy, it gets higher, and then it gets lower again as we move between the amplitudes. The potential energy is the opposite of that. Out at an amplitude, I have maximum potential energy because I have maximum stretch. When I'm at the equilibrium position, that's the unstretched length, I have no more spring potential. And then the total energy is the black line on the top. The total energy is always the same. That's the conservation of energy. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is energy in a pendulum. We played with pendulums in class. So there's my pendulum. And we're going to raise it up to a length. Energy in a pendulum is really, really, really easy. Let's look at spot one and spot two. At spot one, we have our maximum displacement from equilibrium. Which means at spot number one, our velocity is zero. We have maximum acceleration. And we have total energy equal to potential energy. And at this point, that's gravitational potential energy, mgh, where h is that height right there, how much higher point one is from point two. At point two is equilibrium. Our forces are balanced at that point. And at equilibrium, we have a maximum velocity, zero acceleration, and all of my energy is kinetic, or one-half mv squared. And I could figure out... So, at equilibrium, all of my energy is kinetic. And then what we could do to find the maximum speed is set our potential energy equal to our kinetic energy. So, yeah, that maximum velocity is 
given by that equation we could solve for. But we've done that before, just not with the pendulum. Now, the next thing I want to look at And for a pendulum, the only way that we're going to be able to get the period is by looking at t equals 2 pi uh, on the square root of L over G. And that's the only way we can get the period of the pendulum. And the only thing that changes the period of the pendulum is the length of the pendulum and the acceleration due to gravity. You can change the mass, you can change the amplitude, that doesn't matter. All that matters is the length of the pendulum. And then here's the energy graph for that. So the kinetic energy, oh, I swapped my colors, sorry about that. So the kinetic energy is in blue. We have zero kinetic energy at my highest uh, amplitude and we have maximum kinetic energy when we're at equilibrium. Our potential energy is in red. We have the highest potential energy when we're at position one pulled all the way out and the lowest potential energy back at position two. In fact, the potential energy graph just looks a lot like the path of the object that it goes. And as before, the total energy is zero. Sorry, the total energy never changes. We get the same amount of energy the entire time, and it's always equal to my maximum potential energy, and it's always equal to my maximum kinetic energy. Now, uh, the last thing I want to look at is the position versus time graph for this motion and all the things that we can get out of it. So, let's draw that real quick. Here's position versus time. We have a couple wavelengths couple periods, maximum three meters, minimum negative three meters. Now, just by looking at the graph, okay, so let's say we have a mass on a spring and the value for that mass is two kilograms. Now, just by looking at this graph, we can get some information. So let's look at uh, the stuff we know without making any calculations, just by looking at the graph and looking at these values. The first thing that we know is that the amplitude is three meters. That's my highest position uh, above and below equilibrium. Really easy to get. The next thing that we know is that the period is one second. Let me trace out from beginning, from where we start, back to that same position takes one second. That whole thing takes one second. Uh, then we see that my maximum positive velocity, that's where I have maximum positive slope, and we know it's going to be at equilibrium. My maximum positive velocity is where we put those two hashes at 0.75 seconds and 1.75 seconds. My maximum negative velocity is when we're on our way down passing through equilibrium. That's at 0.25 seconds and 1.25 seconds, right there and there. We can also get our Maximum positive acceleration, that happens at 0.5 and 1.5. That's the bottom of our path where we're making our smiley face up. And six, my maximum negative acceleration happens at zero seconds, one second, and two seconds. Those are all the things we can know without calculating, just by analyzing the position versus time graph. Now, if we do some calculations, we can get even more stuff with just the things that we know right now. So the stuff we can calculate just from this graph. First thing we can calculate is the spring constant. Well, how can we do that? Well, we know that the period here is 2 pi on the square root of m over k. And we showed this on the first slide. If you solve for k, you get 4 pi squared m over the period. Well, 4 pi is a number 4 pi squared is a number that we can plug in. M we know is 2 kilograms, and the period is 1 second. So we plug all that stuff in, and K is 4 times 3.14 squared times 2 kilograms over 1 second squared. And so that spring constant comes out to be roughly 79 newtons per meter. 
So boom, just from that graph and knowing the mass, we can calculate the spring constant. The next thing we can calculate is the maximum potential energy. You go, well, how can we do that? We know for a spring that potential energy is 1 half Ka squared. We just found K, and we know the amplitude, so we can put those two things together. 1 half the spring constant, 79 newtons per meter, times the amplitude of 3 meters squared. Boom. So energy comes out to be 355 joules. Really, really easy. Now, my maximum potential energy is also my total energy, and it's also my maximum kinetic energy. So I can calculate my maximum kinetic energy. Maximum kinetic energy is the same as the maximum potential energy. It just doesn't happen at the same time. Maximum potential energy happens at 0 seconds, 0.5 seconds, 1 second, 1.5 seconds, 2 seconds. Maximum kinetic energy happens where my maximum velocities are. But it's the same as the maximum potential energy because of the conservation of energy. So we know that the maximum kinetic energy is 355 joules. Once we know the maximum kinetic energy, we can find the maximum velocity. We know the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, so if we put, sorry, if we solve for v, multiply by 2, divide by m, take the square root, and plug in our number for maximum kinetic energy, we can get our maximum velocity. 2 times 355 divided by 2, square rooted, gives me my velocity. That velocity comes out to be 18.8 .8 meters per second. Because once you have maximum kinetic energy, you have maximum velocity. Then you can get maximum force and maximum acceleration. Maximum force is just k times my maximum position, or k times my amplitude. So that maximum force is the spring constant, 79 newtons per meter, times 3 meters, maximum force comes out to be 237 newtons. Once we have the maximum force, we can find the max acceleration. Max acceleration, force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration is mass divided by, sorry, force divided by mass. So 237 newtons divided by 2 kilograms. My maximum acceleration is 118.5 meters per second squared. Those are all the things that you can get from the graph. It's just a quick, quick little review of what we've done so far.